one of the nice things about being an atheist who argues with Christians is how often you can win arguments just by showing them the thing they're talking about. Like, you know, they'll try telling you gayness doesn't exist in nature, so you just show them gayness in nature. Or they're trying to tell you the Bible is inerrant, so you just show them the Bible. Well, I saw an amazing example of that this week, thanks to former Satanic Temple spokesperson and current abortion rights activist Jex Blackmore. Apparently, she got sick and tired of hearing about how abortion was murder. So in the middle of a televised debate with anti-abortion activist and incidental rape apologist Rebecca Kiesling, she had an abortion. So we're going to have a link of the video in the show notes, and if you've got a minute, definitely check it out. It's worth it just for the look on Rebecca Kiesling's face. The host sets her up by talking about her advocacy for abortion pills and asks if they're safe. So first she points out that mifepristone is safer than a lot of commonly used drugs that nobody seems to take safety issues with. The specific example she gives is Viagra, which put a little smile on my face. But then she backs up the claim by taking the pill herself. The host is flabbergasted and he's suddenly all like, wait, you're not, you're not pregnant, are you? And she just nods and she says, quote, I would say this is going to end a pregnancy. This will be my third abortion, end quote. From here, we get a solid five seconds of jaw reattaching and whatnot, and then they let the professional liar talk for a while. But holy shit, what an incredible reminder of what a murder it isn't could there be than having her do the shit on live television and then watching everybody go, uh, wait, did, did she actually do it? Was, was that murder or a Mentos? So kudos to Jex Blackmore for once again making anti-abortion crusaders look like the jackasses they are. But, and I'm not trying to diminish her accomplishments at all when I say this, they were already doing a pretty good job of that all on their own. Case in point, last Friday's March for Life in Washington, D.C. You remember, the one that accused the city of initiating vaccine mandates specifically to fuck up their event planning? Yeah, well, that happened, and it somehow managed to be more of an embarrassment than normal thanks to a bunch of white supremacists crashing the party. Now, let me be super clear here. White supremacy is a huge factor in the abortion debate, and I'm not just talking about the paternalistic white saviorism that they freely admit to. Anything that disproportionately affects low-income families and is disproportionately advocated for by middle-class and wealthy families is pretty much guaranteed to be perpetuating the racism status quo in this country. And the abortion debate is no different. But we're talking about a different level of racism here. We're talking about racists who are racist enough to wear the label. So yeah, according to Religion News Service, multiple neo-Nazi groups showed up at their march to support their efforts, including Patriot Front and the America First group. And that led to the organizers being repeatedly asked questions like, so any word on why you're on the same side as all these Nazis? So much so that they even had to release an ixnay on the aisle haze press release that read in part, quote, we condemn any organization that seeks to exclude a person or a group of people based on the color of their skin or any other characteristic, end quote. Not adding, quote, openly. Anyway, the bad news is that the anti-abortion misogynists are winning the fight. The good news is that they're still managing to kick themselves in the dicks a lot along the way. So I'm sure I'll be back with more soon, but until then, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 